Hello and welcome to the new video about war games at my channel and today I'm going to play Hoplite, a warfare in the Greco-Persian age, 5th, 4th century before Christ. This is a game of the Great Battles of the History series and it is volume 15 but this is my first game of this <coughs> system and uh, my idea is to play Tanagra scenario. This is a battle between uh, Greek Athenians and Spartans along with some of their allies on both sides and uh, this is I think a battle that should be played first of this uh, game. There is a lot of battles in this game. This is interesting because uh, you can see there is one, two, three, four, five, six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 games, 11 battles in one game. This is probably first game uh, in my collection that has so many battles in one box, so I am quite impressed. And uh, this battle is uh, meant to be uh, the easiest of all, because this is very straightforward, as you probably can see this. There are only two lines of, two lines of hoplites uh, standing against each other, and they are going to run on each other, clash, and the one who, who will have a better, better luck probably win. So, not much strategy here, save to some uh, details that I'm going to tell you about uh, later. And my, uh, my idea also is to show you how this system works. Uh, this system has two versions, I believe, because there are, there are two sets of tables in the box. Uh, one is for so-called standard uh, uh, standard rules like here and there is also a set of boards sorry of uh, tables for something which is called simple great battles of history uh, this is i believe some other version of this game with uh, different rules uh, so you can buy these rules uh, uh, as a standalone product and i don't have these rules because they don't ca didn't come with this game so I'm going to play with standard uh, charts and tables and this is going to be an interesting because this is a very interesting game. I like it and even it's not easy to master. There are some things that can be qu quite tricky. It is still fun to play. Uh, one of my pals uh, calls uh, this game a Tetris because uh, <coughs> at the beginning of the game a lot of units stand in, uh, in the way they look and making them look like some geometrical figures but it changes very quickly. Okay, here we have a battle of Tanagra with, with uh, two lines of hoplites and let's first take a look on the counters. So let's zoom a bit, but not on the battlefield, but, but on the counters. Uh, each unit has two values. First, it is, it is, sorry, <laughs> it is troop quality. This shows how well unit is trained at, equipped at, how uh, how uh, uh, how uh, good it is in morale and manpower. So this is definitely a basic uh, uh, quality of uh, unit in the fight. The other value is movement allowance. This shows how good, uh, how far this unit may move. So that's all when it comes to the units. As you may see, we have a lot of hoplites here and they are doubled units because <coughs> they, they are uh, bigger than normal units. For example, let's take this uh, cavalry unit. As you can see, it is half uh, big, uh, uh, sorry, half small th than this uh, double, uh, double unit. And in this game, uh, double counters are only meant for to be a hoplite phalanx, no, no, no one else. <coughs> there are also commanders in this game. For example, here we have a uh, Athenian commander, but uh, uh, there are commanders uh, for uh, uh, for uh, any other nations as well and uh, in some scenarios we have a more of the, more of the commanders because uh, there are sometimes overall commanders and commanders for some formations in these battles we have only uh, overall commanders so he, uh, so this guy commands all the Athenian units and so uh, what uh, there is on his uh, counter first we have a command range this shows how far he can shout well something like this this means that this is a range of his effective command but good thing is that uh, his units that are standing next to each other are making this uh, line of command 
longer. So for example he is here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So th th this is his uh, command range but because they are all standing next to each other so even this and that units are in his command range. So that's good. Next is his initiative uh, rating. This shows <laughs> well something like how uh, how good tactician he is. Uh, uh, with this uh, uh, this rating he can uh, give uh, he can make uh, his units move faster in the battlefield or rather first he can trump enemy actions and make his actions first so this is of his value as a commander and finally the steered rating in yellow is his charisma this shows how uh, how charismatic leader he is how he is good in combat and how uh, how good he can in, he can support his unit his units when they are fighting so, that, uh, that's almost everything when it comes to the counters, or maybe one more thing. Uh, here you can see a Sparta unit, unit and with this uh, red triangle. This red triangle means that this Sparta unit is formed from the real Spartans, citizens of Sparta, who are uh, best warriors of the uh, ancient Greece. They are, uh, they are best trained and thanks to this uh, marker they can perform such some uh, hard of risky maneuvers without any risk. You will see, you will see uh, later what it means but for this game this, uh, this, uh, we have only one of that unit. So for example we, can, we have more Sparta units here but they are not uh, real Spartans but uh, just uh, allies. Only this one unit is uh, guys. For, uh, these are guys uh, from Sparta, and they are well something like uh, you. You probably remember from the movie about uh, Spartans. <laughs> so uh, that's all when it comes to the counters. As you can see, the board is clear. There is no any create any problematic terrain here. Everything is uh, clear. So this is a perfect battlefield for hoplites because they can charge on the enemy without any problems that they might be. Uh, moving through the woods, uh, streams, streams uh, hills or so, they are eager to fight and to smash the enemy. And you may ask how to win. Okay, this is quite an e easy thing to guess, because you, ha you have to defeat the enemy. You don't have to capture any uh, uh, victory points at the board or anything like this. All you have to do is to defeat your enemy by making his army road. And how to make enemy road? As for that we are using road point tracking card. Every time enemy enemy unit is eliminated at the at the end of the turn we are marking this on on the road points tracking card. Of course if enemy unit is eliminated we are increasing enemy number of the road points. And if uh, this number reaches the level of uh, enemy routing then enemy enemy army is defeated. For example, for this scenario, uh, Athenian army withdraws when units with route points totaling at last 45 have been eliminated. The Spartan army withdraws when units with route points totaling at last 35 have been eliminated. So, if uh, we would eliminate uh, units worth of 35 of uh, Sparta, they uh, then Athenians win the battle, and how to make it? Uh, we uh, here we have a road points awards. So uh, thanks to this, we know uh, how many points each unit is worth. We have mostly a uh, phalanx, uh, hop hoplite phalanx here, and uh, we can see that each hoplite, hoplite phalanx is worth its TQ doubled. So if, we, if uh, such phalanx is eliminated, for example, it, is, it has a uh, troop quality of 6, uh, Athenian, gain, Athenian player gains plus 12 of road points. So this is quite a big number, you can see. And that's when it comes to the basics. Uh, everything else will go along with the gameplay, so uh, we can start our game, I think. So, we are starting with turn 1, 
This game usually doesn't take more than two or three turns. Sometimes it can even end in the turn one, but it's well quite rare. And uh, we are <coughs> we have such a handy sequence of play here. Help. And uh, first is initiative determination phase. In this game, a special scenario rule says that a Spartan player has an initiative in the turn one. So he can he can move uh, perform his actions first. And uh, there is one special rule for this uh, game about Thessalian cavalry, which is uh, allied of the Athenians, but in the history these Thessalians switched side, betra betrayed their Athenian allies and uh, joined Spartans. Uh, and uh, to make it, a Spartan player may try to persuade these Thessalians to join him. To do it, he has to play his momentum activation marker and make a roll. <clears throat> so, this is this, uh, this is what I'm uh, going to do. I play as a Spartan player my momentum marker and I make a roll. If I would roll six or more, these Thessalians are joining Spartans and if I roll five or less, they are staying with their Athenian allies. So I rolled one, and so they are stay they are staying with Athenians. And because of that, this Spartan momentum counter is wasted. So we are uh, uh, we are moving to the next uh, step, and in the ne in this step, I I put all the remaining activation activation marker uh, to the some cup and draw randomly one of these. So what is it going to do? It's Sparta hoplite. So Spartans are going to make their move. And when it comes to the uh, uh, to the hoplites, the mo their movement is well quite different than usually uh, when it comes to all the other units. There is <coughs> something that co that is called hoplite, hoplite advance to combat table, and for the for each of hoplite unit at the beginning of the game we have to make a roll. If we, we if we would roll zero to one it walks. If we would roll 2 from 2 6, it trots. And it would, if we would roll 7 or more, it runs. So, we have to make a roll, and there is one exception again. Spartans. These true Spartans with red triangle, <coughs> they don't have to roll, they are, on, they are trotting. By default. So I can place a trot counter next to them, and for all the other units I, I will have to make a roll. So, starting with them, I'm rolling, and I rolled zero, so they are walking. Walk is the slowest move, they can move only three. So, one, two, three. The other unit, which is Corinthian, it is zero again, wow! One, two, three, and walk counter. So the good point is that they are they are next to each other, but they are moving quite slow. I don't know if they are afraid of Athenians or not. So for the next unit, four, four is a trot. So they are trotting. One, two, three, four. And now for these Messanians, seven. This means they are running. I place run counter, they move. Five. One, two, three, four, five. And after making a movement with run, I have to perform troop quality check. Troop quality check is a die roll, and I have to roll less or equal to the troop quality of such a unit. So they have troop quality of 6. I rolled 5, so they passed. If I if they would have failed, they would gain one cohesion hit. So next is this unit. 1, so they walk. 1, 
to 3. So you can see our pretty uh, straight line of the units uh, is already breaking. Next, these guys, 3, they are trotting. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now this starts looking more like some kind of staircase. And now this, 2, so they are tr trotting. One, two, three, four. Next, these guys. Four, they are trotting. One, two, three, four. And these guys don't, doesn't have to ro ro roll because they are Spartans, so they are trotting. One, two, three, four. So you can see it is good to keep a line, but it's not always easy in this game because of this uh, movement uh, rule. So that's all when it comes to this Spartan's move, so I have to uh, remove this hoplite activation marker and I draw another activation marker, which is going to be Athenian Momentum. So Athenian player may activate any of his units. Uh, we have only one formation on the board, because this cavalry is, uh, according to the special scenario rules, a part of the overall formation. In some games we might have different formations, uh, of the, uh, and th then uh, we can use such a momentum unit to momentum counter to activate any of these formations, or to make our formation that already moved, move again. But this is uh, risky, because you have to suffer some penalties because of that, but uh, here it is not important for us, for now, we're going to make a roll movement with our hoplites. But first I'm going to move these cavalry units. They are quite fast because they have 8 points of movement, they are weak. Uh, it made, uh, doesn't uh, look like this at, at, now, at now because they, the, their troop quality is quite a big, they have 5 and they have 6. But in fact, they are not very good in uh, combat, especially when they are attacking from the front. Well, you can guess that a bunch of uh, cavalry guys attacking uh, uh, phalanx, which is a massive wall of shields and long spears. Well, <laughs> this uh, this can't uh, end good. But they are quite good when it comes to the attacking from the rear, to blocking enemy uh, retreat uh, paths and so. So this they might be quite handy. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how I'm going to move them. And now I have to make a rolls for Athenian hoplites. Starting with these dudes. Zero, so they are walking. One, two, three. Next, these guys. Four, so they are trotting. One, two, three, four. Next one is two, trot. One, two, three, four. So they are getting closer to the enemy, but none attacking. Next one is four again. One, two, three, four. So Athenians managed to make quite a nice line so far. Four again, wow. One, two, three, four. Trot. Zero. So they are walking. One, two, three. Two. So this is trot. One, two, three, four. Oh my! So they, uh, they, uh, they are now in the front hex of the enemy, and because of that, I am placing here shock, no TQ check, because they entered enemy zone of control. Uh, sorry, no zone. There are no zone, zones of control in this game. They entered enemy front hex. 
Some units have to perform a troop quality check when they enter enemy zone, uh, enemy front hex, and uh, but uh, they are they don't have to. So next next unit, it is six. So they trot. One, two, three, four. Oh, this is good. This is going to be good because they will attack with numerical advantage. And I also have to place. Uh, shock, no, TQ check. Two, this is trot. One, two, three, four. Oh, do I have more? Yes, I have. Again, nine. So they are running. One, two, three, four, five. And I have to make troop quality roll for them. Nine. They failed. So they suffer three cohesion hits. This is very very bad. Because as you can see uh, they have a troop quality of six. I rolled nine. So there is difference of three. So they suffered three cohesion hits. This is uh, very bad for them because uh, it, will, it makes them much more vulnerable for the combat. And now the last one. Oh sorry for the sun. The sun is starting to shine. I I hope it. Uh, I hope it that it won't happen now. So I am going to make move move my board a bit, so nothing. Uh, so the shade won't hide anything. Okay, this should be good. And now for these guys, it is two, so they are trotting. One, two, three, four. And that would be all when it comes to the uh, Athenian movement and we will have first combat here. Uh, but first I have to correct something that I ma made wrong. So I checked and I'm uh, now sure what I did wrong. And this here. Uh, they suffered uh, three cohesion hits and it was wrong. I uh, failed this uh, tro troop quality check, so but I uh, but because of that I could I should only suffer one cohesion hit. No matter how uh, how big how uh, much I rolled, they only suffer one cohesion hit. No, uh, not the difference between a roll and their troop quality. That was my mistake. Sorry because of that. And next we have to. Uh, uh, resolve a uh, combat. Uh, first we have to uh, tell which units are attacking which. Here we have a clear situation, these two phalanx are attacking these units. There are no commanders here, because if commanders are involved we have to make a rolls for possible loss of the commander, and if there are commander on the bo each side, they might even duel. But this is not important here, because there are no duels here, b because there are no commanders here. Uh, next is a uh, uh, it is uh, everything uh, pictured here in this sequence of play, so it is good. It is good. So uh, first we have press, uh, uh, the press shock resolution TQ checks. So these two units doesn't have to. Oh, sorry, I placed it on the wrong side because they have shock no TQ check. You don't have to make a shock TQ check if you enter enemy uh, front hex. Uh, in this uh, movement, uh, if you're in your movement phase, so they are just entered and attacked this uh, enemy phalanx. But defender has to make a troop quality check to see how well he is standing against the attacking forces, because sometimes uh, the, such units are just chicken and they are not ca uh, able to fight. Or they are suffering losses because of that. So I'm going to make a troop quality check for them. They have six and I roll eight. So they suffer two cohesion points right at the beginning of the battle. So this is bad for them and they already suffered some losses and, uh, and the combat is just the beginning. And next uh, we have to, res uh, to resolve the shock. So this has uh, some this has some steps. First, we have to check which units are attacking which when it comes to their quality. 
we have hop lights on each side so we are taking a shock superiority chart and check defender type, defender type and attacker type. These are hop lights on both sides so no one is superior. Uh, sometimes attacker or defender is superior. You can see that if hop lights are attacking uh, some uh, uh, medium infantry, light infantry, playasts or skirmishers, then hop lights are attacker superior. If uh, light units are attacking hop lights, they are often then often defender is uh, superior because hop lights are best uh, units here. But here we have hop light against hop light. So no one is superior. Next we have comparative weapon systems chart. This tells us which column of the shock combat resol results table we will be using. We have hoplite, hoplites, attacking hoplites. So we will use column of 7. This is here. And now we, have we, we are going to check if there are any uh, modifiers for our roles. Uh, there is one uh, modifier for the column uh, adjustment if uh, there are if uh, attacker or defender has numerical advantage but there is no such situation because we have two phalanx attacking one phalanx but uh, this phalanx touches uh, enemy phalanx only with one edge if they would at if they would attack with all their might then uh, then attacker will be uh, will have advantage, but now they don't have to, even though they are involved in combat. And uh, there are no uh, commanders here, so no modifiers for commander. And also, there is a modifier if attacker has run, but here only defender has run, and this gives him literally nothing. If attacker has run, he, ha he gains plus two modifier. So. There are no modifiers. I will roll in the column of 7 and it is 8. 8 in the column of 7 is 2, 3. So attacker suffers 2 cohesion hits and the defender suffers 3 cohesion hits. This is quite... Uh, and that's where attacking with 2 units even if one of them is not fully involved in combat is handy. Why? Because uh, they, I can divide my cohesion hits between between my two units. So each of them suffers one cohesion hits and the defender has to suffer three cohesion hits so they have five. I can remove these uh, markers because the, these units are already engaged in combat and because of that we are also removing these movement markers. They already reached their enemy and they are fighting each other and I can place engaged counters on them. This means that they are engaged in combat. They cannot move till the combat uh, ends or one of their units is eliminated or so. But for now this is all. And now when the combat is done I have to check if any of the units uh, involved in this combat collapsed. Because if the number of cohesion hits reaches the troop quality or it's or it's bigger or even if it's one one point less than cohesion hits there is a chance that unit might collapse and rot so for them i have to make a roll and uh, this is gonna be a, a troop quality check i roll eight so eight is higher than six so they failed because of that they lost and they are now rotting. I'm going to remove these counters and I have to move them two hexes away. One, two. Mark with rotate and now I can also uh, change their facing if I want to but I don't wanna. And I can also now uh, move one of my attacking unit one hex forward on the hex that was occupied by the enemy so for example let's move them here and this concludes combat and this what that's all when it comes to the Athenian activation so everything is done and we have one more activation marker in the cup and this is Athenian's hoplite 
So Athenians might activate their hop their units again, <coughs> but if they are going to move twice in the turn, they have to suffer one cohesion hit. Of course, they don't have to move. Uh, they may be just activate, and for example, to uh, and they might also recover some of their cohesion hits. But anyway, uh, Athenian player decides to sp to play this counter. And now a Spartan player may say no. He doesn't want Athenian player to play this, uh, this counter and there is an option for him to cancel this. This option is called tramping and it doesn't mean shouting uh, make America great again but instead uh, a Spartan player may uh, cancel this uh, Athenian order and to uh, play some of his orders, but he hasn't any because he's already spent all his uh, activation markers, but even so he might cancel this activation marker. But there is a danger that if he would fail, then Athenian player will regain his momentum counter. So it is a risky option. And how to, how to trump? And uh, if you want to trump, you have to make a roll with this d10 and the res result has to be equal or less than uh, overall commander initiative rating. So Spartan overall commander initiative rating is 2. So to successfully trump enemy action he has to roll 2 or less. So this is quite a risky because if he would fail Athenian player will gain his momentum counter and he will be able to use it again. So it give him even more actions in this turn, so this is very bad. So, a uh, Spartan player decides to uh, try and he makes a roll and he roll 8. So this is fail and because of that uh, Athenian player uh, takes his momentum counter and places on the in the cup. So this is quite bad for Spartans, but that was a risk. So Athenian player activates his units with this command and now what he, he might do? All the units with a uh, command uh, counter like this have to move. As long as they have these, co these counters they have to make movement in each of their activation. But the ones without such, an, or such, an, uh, such a counter doesn't have to move. So they might they might otherwise regain their uh, cohesion hits. Okay, so let's start with our uh, units. I'm going to start with this uh, phalanx and one, two, three. So I moved here, and because it was my second movement in this uh, activation, I take one cohesion hit. And next, this unit. They move here, and now they are going to make a wheeled maneuver. This means that I am moving like this. This will allow me to attack enemy from the flank, but to make, do this I have to suffer one cohesion hit, and I suffer another one for moving for the second time in this turn, and uh, make a troop quality check. It is 4, I have 6, so I passed. Now this moves here and they also suffer one cohesion hit because of moving twice. And now I have to remember to place these counters with shock no troop quality, no TQ. Okay, these are good. Now this uh, phalanx moves here also suffers one cohesion hit and I place uh, no TQ I can remove these move, count move counters now because they won't be needed anymore for them they move here and they gain <coughs> troop quality it is only worth to keep this move, uh, movement counter as long as you have run and you are going to attack, because a run 
has some impact for the attack, but otherwise this uh, walk, this movement counters can be removed as soon as your first combat begins. So one, two, for them they have walk and one cohesion hit. As for them, I think I will move here and attack this. Or maybe not. Or maybe... <laughs> that's dilemma. I think I will uh, just stay here and let them regain uh, their cohesion hits. Now, them... I will move them there. And so I have one cohesion... Uh, I have uh, one cohesion hit. Also, again, I forgot to place these counters. And they will move here. So they will help to attack. This will be two units against one, so this will be quite effective. And again, this one is go out. And this goes here. Mm -hmm. They move here, or maybe not. Oh no, no, so they have, because they have run command, so they have to. So they move here, and they gain one uh, cohesion hit. And now I have to make a roll for them, because they are running. Seven, it fails, so they gain another cohesion hit. This is bad. And now they... One, two, three, one cohesion hit, and four. Okay, so they have no TQ and no TQ. So this is all when it comes to the Athenian uh, movement. Uh, oh no, phalanx. Uh, I made moved phalanx only and I can still have use my cavalry. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sorry, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> uh, cavalry is not very good when uh, attacking uh, infantry from the front, but it can be quite effective if he wants to make enemy uh, uh, en enemies retreat harder, because enemy uh, uh, cannot enter hexes uh, that are uh, controlled by the en by by our units. So such cavalry might be quite effective attacking uh, routing units or so or. Uh, br uh, or uh, limiting a number of the hexes enemy can withdraw on. So that's all when it comes to the uh, uh, hoplite uh, movement and now I still can, can f attack the enemy. Even with this cohesion hits I have a better position to attack now so this can be quite effective for Athenians and maybe it will even allow them to win this game in the one turn. Quite, imp quite hard to imagine, but it's, it is not impossible. So, we can resolve these uh, fights uh, that we have to check, and uh, starting with, let's say, this flank. So, they are attacking, so they don't have to make uh, TQ checks, but uh, defender has to. So, let's make a TQ check for this uh, uh, Spartan allies, and it is one, they passed, so now we can resolve combat. Oh, also we have a commander here, so I have a roll for him. It is five, so he is not wounded. And next we have to make check for everything. We have hoplites against hoplites, so uh, there no one is superior. Well, no. Uh, Athenians are superior, superior because every time uh, your units are attacking enemy from uh, flank or from rear, 
they are superior. So Athenians are superior. Uh, there, the, we have hoplites against hoplites, so we'll be, we'll be using uh, column 7 again. And now let's check for modifiers. We have uh, commander, so he, he gives us plus 2. And because attacker is superior, we are going to double enemies, uh, defend, sorry, defenders, uh, cohesion hits. So I'm go going to make a roll in the column of 7 with plus 2. So it's 9. Wow, this is very good. So 9 plus 2 is 11. So it is 1 to 4. So uh, 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 attacker suffers 1 cohesion hit and defender suffers 8 cohesion hits. So this is going to be very good. I'm going to give them one cohesion hit and eight cohesion hits to Spar uh, Spartans. This is, well, very bad for them. And next combat is here. We have uh, to make a tr troop quality check for Spartans. One, they, fa they passed. And next, we have... Um, we have hoplites against hoplites, so no one is superior, and we have uh, no di no die roll modifiers because uh, they are not attacking with their full strength, but only <coughs> from the, with the one side. So uh, we don't have uh, double uh, strength of the attacker, and so we roll for seven. Wow, another very good roll. It is nine, so it is two four. So, attacker suffers two cohesion hits and the defender suffers four cohesion hits. So, this is going out and now they have two and they have three. Three. This is very good. I can remove this troop quality check counters as well. As long as this uh, marker. Okay, and next combat is going to be here. We have one against one with no modifiers, so this is going to be se row shear seven with no without any. It is four, so two, two. Each side suffers two cohesion hits. So Spartans have two and Athenians already have two, one, so they have three. Okay. Next combat is here, so uh, this, this is going to be another normal combat. One. This time it is going to be bad for attacker, I believe. It is three, two, two and two. So uh, attacker suffers three cohesion hits. So Athenians have four. And defender suffers two cohesion hits. Next fight is here, so we have again, again one, uh, one, one phalanx again against one phalanx. Well, again, again, bad roll for the attacker. It is three for the attacker and two for the defender. And the last combat is here, and this is going to be different. First, because we have uh, two uh, uh, two attacking uh, phalanx. Oh my god! I totally forgot to make troop quality checks for the defenders here. My ba me bad. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I should make it. I forgot about it. I'm sorry. So uh, I'm going to make it here. Three. They passed, and now. <clears throat> Attacker uh, uh, is uh, superior because they are attacking from the flank and also they have they are attacking with two phalanx against one phalanx so they have they, they are uh, twice twice stronger so we are moving uh, uh, to column 2 in favor of the attacker so we have 9 and now uh, we have uh, enemy commander and I have to roll for them for him He's fine, so he provides minus two. So I'm rolling in column nine with minus two, and because attacker is superior, then defender losses are are double. It is three minus two is is one, 
it is 3, so attacker suffers 3 step, 3 cohesion hits, and uh, defender suffers 4 cohesion hits. So uh, this unit is going to suffer 2 cohesion hits, and this unit going to suffer 1 cohesion hit. while Defender suffers 4 cohesion hits. I'm sorry again for forgetting about these uh, troop quality checks here. Okay, and that's all. That's all for combat, I believe. Uh, yes, no one else is attacking, so this that's all. But now I have to check if anyone, any of our unit is about to collapse. There is a one situation like this, it is here, because uh, a Spart uh, Corinthian Phalanx has troop, uh, troop quality of 7 and it suffered 8 cohesion hits. So I have to make a roll and uh, with uh, plus 1 modifier because 8 is 1 higher than 7. Wow, it is 9 plus 1, it's 10, it's definitely bigger than 7, so they are rotting. 1, 2, and I place them road counter here, and attacker my, ma, uh, must enter vacant hex. So that's all, I don't think any other units are made to uh, to uh, uh, such a check for collapse because they don't have any uh, number of the cohesion hits which is equal to their troop quality or one uh, less. No, none, none the others. So this is all for this turn, sorry, this phase. Yes, that's all. And now you may remember that we have one more uh, counter. Because of the fail failure of the failure attempt of tramping of the Spartan commander, Athenian commander Athenian player gains one more uh, uh, regains his momentum counter, and he may use it again. So this is quite a good option for him if he wants to continue struggle. Also, again I forget about something which is quite important. I should mark these units with engage. This is another important thing to do because the units that are engaged cannot make any actions. They are just engaged in combat and so they have to stay there and fight for all the time uh, as long as enemy units are there. Okay, so that's all. They are all engaged. I think yes, this is, this is all. And now there, this is a, there, there is a question if I want to use this momentum and uh, activate my hoplites again or not. Uh, there is a, uh, I think I will do that. I think I will do, it, do that because, uh, well, uh, these uh, fights here will continue, but also I might be able to regain uh, some cohesion hits here. This unit doesn't have their uh, movement markers anymore. So they can, they are free to move with their basic uh, movement allowance of four, and they also can s just stay, do nothing, and regain two of their cohesion hits. So this is a good option as well. So I'm going to use this uh, momentum uh, counter, and a Spartan player cannot try to uh, trump me again. He, each player may trump only one once per turn. So Athenian player uses this momentum ma marker and now he has to make a move because some, uh, one of his uh, phalanx still has a movement uh, order so he has to make a move one, two, three. So oh, I spent uh, I, uh, I spent uh, one I gain I gain one cohesion hits for moving, and two more cohesion hits because of making two uh, turns. So I have four cohesion hits, 
and I still have this work. Okay, that's all when it comes to them. Uh, any other? No. Uh, all the other uh, phalanx ha haven't uh, such an such uh, counters, so they don't have to move if they want to. So, for example, I'm not moving here, and instead I am removing two cohesion hits from this unit. Same here. I am not moving, but I get, regain two cohesion hits. Mm, any others? No. All the other units are engaged, so they have to attack. And this is bad. And I'm going to maybe make this un this cavalry move one, two, to attack this roting, uh, roting uh, phalanx. And so, uh -huh. so I get plus one because I'm moving again. I didn't move this cavalry unit in the previous turn because it wasn't necessary, but now I would like to make such a movement. All right. That's all when it comes to the movement, and now I can make combat if I want to. Also, I would like, if I can, I can make uh, this uh, phalanx move and attack these guys. So I gain one cohesion hit because of the movement, and uh, this counter. Okay, so that's all when it comes to the movement, and I can uh, make uh, any attacks. This is not going to be uh, easy because there is a lot of them, but if it will work well, this might be the final phase of this game. So let's maybe zoom a bit, okay, and we are starting here. Uh, first, I have to make a, a troop quality for this unit. And as you can see, when rotating, its troop quality is one. So I rolled zero. They failed. They passed. Incredible. I thought it, they are already done, but wow, they are. They made. They made it. So we have to resolve combat because if they want to, if they wouldn't, and they, if they would suffer just the one cohesion hit, they are eliminated. But they they suffer. Uh, they uh, they survived. Okay, we have light cavalry attacking phalanx, so defender is superior. Or is he? No, because any unit that attacks enemy through its flank or rear hex is attack superior. So our cavalry is attack superior. Next, we have to check. We are we are light cavalry and we are attacking hoplites, so we'll be using column of ta two. Sorry. <clears throat> so the, here is column of two, and we are attack, attacking. Uh, super, uh, we are attacker superior, so we are double uh, defenders' losses. I wrote seven. So it is four and two. So uh, uh, attacker suffers two cohesion hits, and defender suffers two cohesion hits. But because it is doubled, he suffers four cohesion hits. So I suffered. Four cohesion hits. I have already five cohesion, so I have cohesion of. Sorry, I had one cohesion hit, so I have five cohesion hits. But because uh, they suffered if only uh, four cohesion hits, and I'm uh, so they are eliminated because the uh, rotting rotting unit is eliminated if suffers on just one cohesion hit. So it is enough to get them out of the game, and our brave cavalry takes Hex, and next combat is here. They are attacking this uh, Phalanx. It is again one to one, so it is uh, seven column without any modifiers, so we are making a roll. It is zero, wow, bad. This is bad. Attacker suffers two cohesion hits, defender suffers, sorry, attacker suffers three cohesion hits, defender suffers two cohesion hits. So defender suffers two, so he's six, and attacker suffers three, so he suffers one, and he suffers two. This is a good side of attacking with two units. You can al you can always divide your cohesion hits, and this is not as deadly as normally. Next, we have a combat here, and this, they were not engaged; they attacked, 
as these Athenians attacked. So I have to make a troop quality for them. And this is six. So they suffered five cohesion hits. Uh, and because they are routed, they are eliminated as well. And I can take a vacant hex. Okay, next combat is here. This is uh, phalanx against phalanx without any modifiers. So we have column 7 without any modifiers. So we have 2 at 7. So it is 2 and 2. Each side suffers 2 cohesion hits. So it is 5 and it is 4. And next combat is here. Again, phalanx against phalanx. Oh my, one. It is three and two. So attacker suffers three. So they are seven. And defender suffers two. So they are four. No good. No good for the Athenians. And next combat is here. We have uh, Again, phalanx against phalanx, 7, 7 in 7 is 2 and 3, so attacker suffers 2, defender suffers 3. So attacker is 6, while defender is 5. And the last combat here. Uh, attacker is superior and has uh, and is uh, twice stronger so we will be using column of 9 and we will have uh, defender uh, losses doubled but uh, com uh, defender has a commander oh I should make a roll for him he survived and now we gain minus 2 for our die roll so it is 3 minus 2 is 1 so it is 3 against 2. So attacker suffers 3 cohesion hits, defender suffers 4 cohesion hits. So we have 3. So I'm going to make them... Uh, so, sorry, oh. They suffered 2 and they suffered 1. And uh, defender suffers, eight, suffers 4, so they have 8 cohesion hits now. And that's all when it comes to the combat, and now we have to make a rolls for possible collapse. And this is going to be a decisive moment, because if any of the Athenian, uh, sorry, if any of the Spartan units would collapse, then um, it might be even game over. But, but if the big number of uh, Athenian units would collapse, then it might be game over for Athenians. So, this can be interesting. Okay, let's start. First here, they have uh, a troop quality of 5 and they suffered 5 cohesion hits, so we're going to make a roll for them. They, they passed, so we can lower their cohesion hits by 1. Next here, that's how many, how many cohesion hits they have. Sorry, they have troop quality of 4, so no problem for them. They have troop quality of 6, uh, sorry. They both have troop quality of 6, so 4 is no problem for them. But these guys have troop quality of 6, so they have 5. So we have to make a roll for them. 5, they passed. So we can lower their troop quality, their uh, cohesion hits by 1. Okay, this is good. Now here, they have 6 and there is 5, so make a roll. They failed! And since they failed, they are rotting. One, two. Oh, I don't have to. Mm -hmm. Where is road counter? It is here. Okay, this is good. No, well, not quite good. But still, we can disengage them and make these Spartans to take, take ground. Next, these Athenians. They have six and they have suffered seven cohesion hits. So we have plus one for our die roll. It is zero plus one. It is good. They passed. So we can give them six. Now they have four, so they are fine. 
and they have six, so we have we have to make die roll for them. Days passed, and now for them, they failed, so they are rotting. One, two. Okay, and they are taking ground. And now they. First, these Athenians, they have co uh, troop quality of 6 and they suffer 5 cohesion hits. 0, they passed. And now these Spartans, they have troop quality of 7 and they suffered 8 cohesion hits. So they have plus 1. 7, it's 7, they passed. Even so, but this is going to be hard for them. And finally, this uh, Athenian unit, it has 4, it has 5 and 4 cohesion hits, so they have to make a check for as well. They passed. And that's all when it comes to the collapse, uh, possible collapse. And now we have to make uh, we, uh, we made finally all the activations because all the activation markers are done and we have uh, another uh, last phase which is row to remove, replace and reload phase. First, we have uh, remove all, all the uh, routing ro phalanx from the game. So this one goes out and this one goes away as well. So all the fa uh, all the other units all the other units are rotating, but we have no other units that are rotating. So that's all. And next we have withdrawal phase. So we have to count a number of rotating points each player has. So let's take a look on the road tracking card. Maybe I should move camera a bit. And first, Spartans. They lost three of their phalanx, and each phalanx is worth twice of its troop quality. So you have 12. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is good. Yet another 12. So it is 24. And 14. So we have 30. Eight, while Athenians lost one phalanx, so it, they have twelve road points. And now we have to check uh, level of routing for each side. For this particular battle, it is forty-five for Athenians and thirty-five for Spartans, since Spartan lost uh, thirty-eight. They are they are losing this battle. The army retreats, uh, runs out from the battlefield crying uh, that we, we lost, and Athenians are winners. So, that, that's, uh, that would be everything when it comes to this battle. As, as you can see, this was fairly easy. It was, uh, I was able to finish this battle in one turn. It was mostly because of this failed Trump attempt. Uh, you can, you can uh, see how... Uh, how hazard rows are such tra such uh, actions. If, uh, if Spartans uh, would be able to make it, they would be able to finish this game without uh, these last two activations. But since they failed, Athenians had two more activations to make their actions. So this was uh, very, de very deadly for Athenians, sorry, for Spartans, and let Athenians win. So that would be all when it comes to this uh, battle. I, like I said before, it was an easy battle. It was uh, quick, without any uh, complicated maneuvers. We had only a uh, limited number of uh, units, and uh, most of them were hoplites against hoplites. Uh, but I'm, uh, I think that I'm going to record a battle of Ephesus next, because Ephesus is a much more interesting battle with uh, hoplites against Persian mobile, mobile units. Uh, their light cavalry, horse uh, arch, uh, archers on horses, their chariots, so this is going to be much more interesting, I think, but 
Uh, for now, that's all. Thank you for watching and see you again.